I've always found it quite challenging making videos about tech the way I want to without having a dedicated space for everything. Where I lived prior to moving over to this place didn't have a spare room or space I could set up my equipment for shooting and editing videos. During my time there, I made a note of the most important things I would need in the studio setup to make the video making process a lot easier and more effective. Before the move, I had gone to see the house a few times beforehand. The first thing I noticed the first time I was in the house was the amount of natural light it gets in general, which is a huge plus for video shooting. One of the rooms in the house had an unconventionally massive window and let in an insane amount of light and this really sold me on the entire house considering I'd come from living and creating content in a small one bedroom basement with zero access to natural light. As soon as I was sure I'd be moving into the house, my planning was underway. The room isn't large, but I wanted to fit a lot in there. I had to be strategic in how I structured everything. I was looking to add a section for my gaming setup and another section for my workspace or video editing station, a B-roll table for shooting my product videos and photos, and I also wanted a modern look and feel to the room. You know, something special to make it all stand out. And then the perfect idea came along, a wood slat feature wall. I had a lot of help with the design aspect from my girl Hannah, who is amazing at anything design related. She also helped a lot during the building process. After struggling for a while, I came up with the perfect way to maximize the space available to me in the room without creating a cramped up feeling in there. I decided to set up a B-roll table I could easily move around build a wood slat wall and the largest wall in the room to use as my background when shooting videos and taking product photos, and also create a clean and effective mobile workstation in a non-disruptive section of the room. I also figured I'd fit the gaming setup in the closet within the same room to maintain a clean and spacious studio. I'll explain how I built the gaming setup in a different video, but hop on as I bring you along on how I've put together everything else that makes up the studio for the kind of YouTube video work that I do. In essence, I've decided to build my YouTube studio, my minimalist workspace, and a wood slat feature wall all in one small, bright room. The first thing I did was head over to my nearest local hardware store, Home Depot, to pick up some matte black paint and some painting tools. One cool thing to note is that matte black doesn't look shiny when there's light hitting it on like glossy black. And this was a main reason why I went for that instead of the glossy version. The paint was cheap and all I needed it for was as a background for my soon to be wood slat wall. The wall was originally white and that would have looked seriously hideous if I had just stuck the wood slats on there like that. I haven't painted in over five years, but muscle memory kicked in after the first few brush strokes. We applied the first coat of paint and let that dry over the day before applying the second coat to finish up the matte black look on the second day. The wall painting changed the look of the room immediately and I was certainly impressed. After the wall painting, I moved on to adding wood slats to the feature wall. I went back to the Home Depot to pick up about 40 pieces of stain ready one inch wide hemlock wood. Those weren't cheap, but the alternative was I'd have to pick up a couple of large plywood boards that isn't stain ready and I'd have to cut them into one inch pieces and then sand them and hope they all turn out looking identical. I'm not a professional woodworker, so I don't have all the tools for getting it done that way. With the stain ready pre-cut hemlock wood, what I had to do was cut each wood piece to the same height as the ceiling minus the floorboard. I tried doing that by myself using a handsaw as I was told they wouldn't be able to do that for free. Even though I'm already spending lots and they have a big machine that could cut them all in one swoop. And that will make them the exact same length, which will be ideal. After cutting through a couple by hand, we found someone nice who helped with cutting the rest using the same big machine. I grabbed some water-based walnut wood stain and pull your urethane seal on the way out for the wood. Once I had the wood at home, I took them into the basement and applied the first coat of wood stain. I would have preferred to do it outside for more ventilation, but it's minus 20 and snowing in Canada, and this had to go up. If you don't know what staining is, it's just a way to color the wood and make it into the darker walnut color that I want. That process was painfully long since there were 40 pieces in total, and I had to be thorough with each stroke. I left them to dry for 12 hours before repeating the coating process again, just like painting to catch missing spots. After another drying time of 24 hours, I began applying the first coat of polyurethane to seal the wood and stain and protect it from scratches, knocks, and weather conditions. Polyurethane also gives the wood a richer look and feel. Another 12 hours later, I applied the second coat of polyurethane to all 40 pieces. 
This was the last step in treating the wood to make it into exactly what I was looking for. Although the longest and most tiring part of the entire process, this could have been worse if I had chosen to go the cheaper route of picking up full plywood boards that I'd have to cut and sand myself. Seeing the wood slats the next day hit by the sun was extremely satisfying. I couldn't wait to stick them onto the wall and so that's exactly what I did. I brought each one back up to the room and used the no more nails glue and thin 18 gauge 2 inch nails combo. I definitely recommend using a nail gun for this step. I used an extra piece of 1 inch wood slat that I had initially cut shorter than the others to measure the distance between each wood slat on the wall. This was to help keep the space in between each wood slat consistent. I basically opted for a 1 inch wood slat to 1 inch spacing system and this saved me some money as I would have needed more wood if I went for smaller spacings. I had some help from Hannah in getting these up on the wall and it was done in about one hour of going at it. The final result was this big beautiful wood slat feature wall that now set the tone for the entire room and also set the room apart from the rest of the house. I also added a white piece of wood to finish up the top of the feature wall and help conceal the LED strip I planned on installing up there later on. Before the move I had ordered some blinds with a massive window that let in an enormous amount of sunlight. That arrived shortly after the slat feature wall was completed and I thought it was just perfect. The blind I got is a white honeycomb style that is soundproofing and provides insulation from heat as well. The fact that I'll be making videos and doing voice work in the room makes this a smart choice in my opinion. I'll be getting some dark grey drapes to black out the room whenever I want as well. I'd never installed blinds before but this one was pretty straightforward and it was screwed on strong in no time. One cool feature of this blind is the fact that it opens from the top down or the bottom up and this is great for controlling the amount of light I need and from where I want it coming from. Once that was done it was time to build the b-roll table. The goal with this was to build a table that can be moved to any spot in the room for different kinds of angles and to be easy to stow away. I had ordered two identical standing desk frames a month before moving in. My plan was to use one for my workspace setup and the second I'd attach wheels to and use as my b-roll table. I thought it was a genius idea. Apart from being on wheels my b-roll table would be adjustable to different heights and widths. I went for some black desk frames because it fit well with the aesthetic I was going for. I paired each frame with one of two IKEA lag captains 55 1 8 inch by 23 5 8 inch tabletops. I didn't want anything larger to avoid overpowering the room with both tables. The setup of both the b-roll and workspace desks was super easy as soon as I went through the manual. I didn't have wheels the first time I built the b-roll table but I ordered some heavy duty casters from Amazon later on and screwed them right on. They each hold up to 150 pounds so I'm confident I wouldn't have any issues with them. The movable b-roll table idea is not one I'll be regretting and I'm certain of it. The workspace desk didn't need wheels so I kept that as is and tucked it into one corner of the room that looked like it was designed for just that desk except with a little extra room for the notorious Ikea Alex drawer. That made me happy as I had not thought of storage even though I don't usually need much in my studio. The addition of an Alex drawer was the perfect idea to go alongside the workspace table for my perfect minimalist setup. I tried using one of my older Alex drawers which was black to see if it would be a good fit for the aesthetic of the workspace but that just gave the entire corner a heavy look I did not like. I decided it was time to build my first white Alex drawer. I went and picked up one immediately. I've built a few Alex drawers and so I thought it'd be a breeze but it'd been a while since I built one so I had to read through the IKEA manual as I built but overall that wasn't too bad of a process. Once that was done I switched out the black for the new one and immediately I felt like the workspace lost that heavy look. I used the Alex drawer as a staging point for my most used gear like my cameras, my slider, microphones and batteries. I used the drawer space as a storage for different things and it's more than enough of what I need in that space currently. As soon as the workspace desk and Alex drawer were in place, I knew the wall above the desk couldn't just be plain. It needed something to make it stand out like the adjacent wood slap feature wall. I picked up a 7 pack hexagon wall decor and lighting combo to give the wall an identity and I love it. I'm looking at adding more to that wall for more of an effect soon to be honest with you guys. I also attached one 80 meter LED strip to the back of my desk 
just for a little bit of ambient light for the desk. I added another 80 meter LED strip behind the white finishing at the top of the adjacent feature wall, but that wasn't enough to light the full length of the wall. So I need a connector, which has been out of stock for a while now. I'm still waiting for them to be back in stock to make the wall completely lit up. One more thing I added to that wall was a picture frame holder I picked up from Ikea. Those things are quite cheap. I mounted that just above the hexagon decor and placed some plants and my YouTube plaque from my other channel on there. Maybe one day I'll get one for this channel and I'll need help from you guys. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Then came the fun part. It was time to begin adding all the cool tech stuff to my workspace. The first was my 34 inch ultra wide monitor, which was delivered late, but in the time that I was ready to use it. The aesthetic I was going for here was dark electronics on a bright white surface. The monitor setup was fast and easy and it came with its own desk clamp stand and that saved me some money which I appreciated. I do video editing so I work with long timelines that stretch across the screen so going for an ultra wide seemed like the only option. It's my first time using one but I'll be watching to see how well it ages. I also added a dual phone charging dock for use with my phone when working as well as a pair of HomePod mini speakers for some music in the room. I didn't have everything I needed immediately, but they each arrived over time and the workspace setup eventually became fully functioning. I also ordered a nice large plastic plant to give the room some greenery and that decision I'm happy I made. The last piece to add was my new productivity chair. This came in last, but was the final touch the workspace setup needed. At the end, I feel like I arrived at my goal of building a minimalist workspace setup that wasn't disrupting or dominating the entire room. I powered the entire workspace with my 2021 M1 Max MacBook Pro, which I use as a mobile workstation since I like to bring my work around. I'll go over everything that's a part of my minimalist mobile workspace setup in a different video. So I'll talk about the price it costs, the brands, and different things like that. So if you guys are interested in any of that stuff, make sure you're subscribed, like I said earlier. And also make sure to turn on notifications so you can be notified whenever that video is live. I did cable management at the end of the whole process. And if you've ever done cable management before, you'll know that it's the least fun part and it's always changing every time you add or remove electronics. I think I did a pretty good job with that. Overall, I'm extremely proud of this entire process and the fact that we were able to complete it. This was exactly what I'd hoped for, for a small space, YouTube studio, and minimalist workspace setup combo. There were a lot of firsts for me during this project. In fact, the entire idea of building a dedicated space for my work is a first for me, but I promise it won't be the last. The process took about three weeks to complete, but now it's exactly what I had hoped for, and it's already making my work much more fluid and a whole lot easier. The room remains spacious. I have a sick B-roll table that I can easily move around, which I use for any video or photo shoot I need to do, and the wood slat feature wall just makes the entire room unique and gives me that perfect, rich, dark walnut background that I want in my videos. I won't be going into every individual piece that makes up my workspace setup, but if you want to see that video, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you're interested in checking prices on any of the things I used in putting together my workspace setup and YouTube studio combo, make sure to use the links in the description below. Things could very well change in time, but as of right now, I'm quite happy with what I've got going on here, considering I've come from having no dedicated space at all. That's all I've got for now in this video. I'll catch you all in the next one. It's Midas, and I'm out.